to the following program of great national importance. Hello, I'm Larry Merchant. Before we get to the great debate in the ring tonight, HBO has a special exclusive presentation of another kind of debate. This one among presidential heavyweights, presidents past and present, to get their insights into a heavyweight championship fight. With me are President Bill Clinton and former presidents George Bush and Ronald Reagan. Gentlemen, your thoughts on the champion Riddick Bowe. President Reagan? Riddick? Well, I, I like him a great deal. I especially like his manager, uh, Newman, uh, Paul. What a wonderful actor he is, and like me, he went on to uh, salad dressing. I, went, I was the president. Nancy loves his salad dressing. Mr. President, the manager of the champion isn't Paul Newman. It's Rock Newman. Rock? New, new Rock Knee. Well, I played him one. There you go again. President Bush, your perspective on the champion. Strong, powerful. I wouldn't want to get hit by that right hand of his. I'd probably end up doing another one of those dives like I did in Japan, a dinner that we ha had there. But I know what it's like to get hit by the left and hit hard. But I'll tell you, Riddick Bowe has got a great deal of power with those arms. Arms deal, of p deal, arms deal. I know nothing of an arms deal. I didn't know about it. Let the record stand. I didn't know about an arms deal. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> President Clinton, tell us how you see Riddick Bowe. Thank you. God bless you, Larry. First of all, let me say that I have a great deal of respect for the sport of boxing, and especially for Riddick Bowe, who was able to pull himself out of a poor neighborhood and realize the American dream. And isn't that what we're all looking for? The American dream. And I also want to say that, as you probably know, when I was a student over in Oxford, England, I tried boxing once, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. I couldn't breathe through that mouthpiece on my face. I just couldn't inhale. Let me make it perfectly clear once again. I did not inhale. Thank you for clearing that up, Mr. President. Let's turn now to the challenger, Jesse Ferguson. President Reagan, what are your views on Jesse? Jesse? Is, is he back in town? Well, what's he running for now? No, sir. I think you're talking about Jesse Jackson. This is Jesse Ferguson. Fergie. Fergie, well, she seemed like such a nice girl. Fergie, I think she'll take off her top again tonight. <laughs> President Bush? Look at this guy here. Yeah, well, Ferguson's got to be careful. Got to keep jabbing, got to keep hitting, otherwise Riddick Bow will make him see a thousand points of light. And you, sir. Well, he is the underdog, the challenger, the outsider. And my advice to him would be to do what I did, to keep fighting, to keep pushing, to keep trying. <laughs> There's still hope. I still believe in a place called hope, and I still tell you I didn't inhale. It's almost time to get it on. So why don't you gentlemen give us your predictions? Well, I like them both. You know what my lovely wife, Nancy, always says? Just say Bo. George? Well, I want to make this perfectly clear. Read my lips. <laughs> Bill? Well, first I'd like to say that if anything should happen to those two guys tonight, or, or these two guys, I want you all to remember that my lovely wife Hillary is working on a national health care plan that will have them back on their feet in no time at all. Well, as far as my pick for tonight, well, I'd have to say that I'm going to remain neutral, but I did work up a little something that ought to cheer these guys on. <laughs> There you have it from Washington's top heavyweight analyst. Stay tuned for World Championship Boxing on HBO.
Washington, D.C., a political arena where life sometimes imitates boxing, where congressmen throw jabs and low blows, and lobbyists plot offensive and defensive maneuvers. Tonight, they step aside for world championship boxing as it takes center stage in the nation's capital. We are live from RFK Stadium, where HBO Sports presents a world championship doubleheader. First, Olympic medalist Roy Jones goes for his first professional title against number one contender Bernard Hopkins for the vacant IBF world middleweight crown. And then heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe makes the second title defense of his heavyweight championship reign against tonight's real life Rocky story, Jesse Ferguson. RFK Stadium configured for 30,000 for tonight's boxing event, a crowd of about half that many on hand as we get ready to begin this evening on HBO's World Championship Boxing. Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome back to our continued coverage of the heavyweight reign of Riddick Bowe. You'll recall that he won the championship in a unanimous decision from Evander Holyfield six months ago, defended it three months ago against a woefully underprepared and unqualified Michael Dokes with a one-round knockout in Madison Square Garden. Tonight, he takes on another man over whom he is overwhelmingly favored, Jesse Ferguson, and the question of what Bo gains from continuing to defend the title against this kind of opposition hovers over this event tonight. We'll find out more about that later, but first, a chance to look at the star-crossed Olympic star of the Seoul Games in 88, Roy Jones Jr., as he guns for his first world championship against Bernard Hopkins for the vacant IBF middleweight crown. With me, as always, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. Larry, there's so much talk about Roy Jones. Will this be the night that he stamps himself as a superstar in the sport? Well, that's definitely in the air and it's understandable because he has so much talent. But I think it's time to sort of lower expectation. And here's why. We're in Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, where the crazed media takes the temperature of politicians on a daily basis. And if a politician happens to cough or get a low fever, he's declared terminally ill. Or if he wins a decision instead of a knockout, he's declared a loser. This seems just a little bit crazy to me. I want to turn the volume down and the hype down. Roy Jones is fighting for a middleweight championship. His opponent, Bernard Hopkins, is a Philadelphia fighter who can fight. We may have a terrific fight. But if Roy Jones should win by a decision, if he doesn't look like a combination of Leonard and Hearns and Hagler, I'm not about to bury him. Well, and I'm sure mm -hmm. that uh, nobody else will as well. This will be Jones' third appearance here on HBO, and with George Foreman in training for his upcoming bout with Tommy Morrison, we're privileged once again to be joined by trainer and manager and boxing commentator Gil Clancy. Gil, we saw Jones move up in class against Glenn Wolfe before that, moved up in class against Percy Harris. Both quick knockouts. Is it another quantum leap up to Bernard Hopkins? Oh, Bernard Hopkins is by far the best boxer and puncher that Roy Jones has fought. But conversely, Jones is the most talented fighter that Bernard Hopkins has ever fought. And if Jones fights the way I think he's going to fight, he's going to be well on his way to superstardom. All right, we're going to go right to the fight as both fighters are already in the ring now. Jones wearing the white outfit as he goes around the ring. And there is the executioner symbol that accompanies Bernard Hopkins. Yes, that mystery man under that mask is Bernard Hopkins. A little hype, a little showbiz doesn't hurt if you can fight. And this man can fight. 22 wins, one loss for Bernard Hopkins. He lost his very first professional fight, then sat out 16 months angry at his management for having matched him against a light heavyweight. He has never lost Larry Merchant to a middleweight boxer. And here is the man many regard as the middleweight of the 90s. Roy Jones Jr., like Bernard Hopkins, he has an outstanding record, 21 wins, no losses, 20 KOs, 12 of them within three rounds. He's a rare talent. He has one of those great athletic bodies, a sprinter's legs, and a heavyweight's shoulders. And a superstar's charisma, and we look at the tail of the tape, both fighters at the 160 pound neighborhood. Jones, 159 and a half, didn't arrive in town until Thursday, trained in Pensacola. Some speculate that he had trouble making weight. 
and our punch stat numbers giving you a profile of how active these fighters are, and they are remarkably similar statistically. Same thing with the jabs, and as you can see, they major in power punches. Rules of the bout from our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Roy Jones Jr. and Bernard Hopkins will box tonight using the rules of the International Boxing Federation. 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And in case a cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, and that cut causes the fight to be stopped, we go to the scorecards after six rounds have been completed. Before that, it's a technical draw. Thank Jim. you, Harold. Right now, let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium, the home of the Redskins here in Washington, D.C., where tonight, Spencer Promotions Incorporated and the D.C. Armory Board, in association with Caesars World, presents the first of two world championship bouts. This bout is approved and sanctioned by the Washington District of Columbia Boxing Commission and the International Boxing Federation. IBF President Robert W. Lee, Supervisor at Ringside, Marion Muhammad. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are Lynn Carter, Al DeVito, and Eugene Grant. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action working in a world title bout for the 37th time, referee Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBF Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with gold trim, weighing in at 159 pounds. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, North Philly to be exact, he brings a professional record of 22 victories, only one defeat, 16 of the 22 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, the number one ranked middleweight in the world, Bernard, the Executioner Hopkins. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white trunks with gold trim, weighing 159 and one half pounds from Pensacola, Florida. This 1988 Olympic silver medalist has turned pro with a record of 21 and 0, 20 by KO. Introducing the undefeated number two ranked middleweight in the world, Roy Jones Jr. All right, fellas, fellas, let's go, let's go. Bernard, Roy. All right, gentlemen, we're giving you instructions of the way I expect you to lay my commands at all times. Respect the bell at all times. And protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. Can't go unless we touch them. Touch them up, guys. God bless. Let's rock. All right. Roy Jones has shown respect for Hopkins, says he thinks he can win. I have to change his mind fast. You know, Larry, I think the first round in this fight is going to be the key round. One guy is going to really get more respect than he should from the other guy. And from then on, I think it's going to be one guy really dominating the fight. Bernard Hopkins usually attempts to start very fast. He has attacked many of his opponents from the opening bell. He will probably have more respect for Jones. Jones says that Hopkins is the best man he's ever fought. Hopkins says the same about Jones. That's why it's such a great match. There goes Jones in with that explosive leaping left hook. Jones hurt Glenn Wolf with the left hook, finished him off with right hands to the body. The left hook was also instrumental in his knockout of Percy Harris back in December here on HBO. Hopkins with a right hand over the top, glancing blow. Both men like to box and 
punch, infighting like that will probably be rare, Gil. Yes, but the, and the thing that surprises me about Roy Jones is he very seldom uses a jab. Derry threw a right hand lead, looks to bomb you with that first big punch right away. I think that's one of the errors he makes. He should set the guy up with a good stiff left jab. And Hopkins is not jabbing either. There's that big right hand to Jones again. Kind of wild over the top, but he caught a piece of Hopkins with it. Bernard Hopkins, a little bit more defensive here in the first round than is normally the case. And Jones appears perhaps frustrated by Hopkins' unwillingness to come to him. He's leaping with the left hook and throwing wildly over the top with the right. And Hopkins is a very, very solid professional fighter. Moves well, punches well, side to side. But again, he's in with a very flashy, unorthodox guy in Roy Jones. Both fighters are showing a lot of respect for each other. In his 21 fights, Roy Jones has not had to solve a lot of riddles. Most of his opponents have been sitting ducks. The only route-going performance was against Jorge Castro, who also went the route against the hard-punching Terry Norris. He's just a tough guy who's difficult to take out. But Hopkins, so far, presents a little bit more of a strategic challenge to Jones than Roy may be used to. Both men, when they're jabbing, they're jabbing short. They're not jabbing to the guy. They're trying to get out of the way of punches before they land the punch. Jones landed a right cross. Hopkins unmoved by the contact. Round one comes to a close. RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., outdoors at night. And Riddick Bowe awaits his appearance as he has his hands taped by the legendary trainer, Eddie Futch, in his dressing room. Bo has been customarily calm and relaxed, both at training camp at the homestead in Virginia, Hot Springs, Virginia, and since coming here to Washington, D.C. to prepare for the fight. All right. It's in defense. It's in defense. It's in defense. Be smart out there. Take your distance up. Take it up. Don't wait for me to give you nothing. Take it up. Keep the pressure on him. Make that punch in twos and threes. Don't worry about one big shot. Don't worry about it. It's going to come. You're doing good. It's going to come. Okay. All right. That's all. Way to go, team. Well, that first round was an anti-climax if I've ever seen one. You know, yes, it was. <laughs> Both fighters really showed a lot of respect for each other. As I pointed out, they're not even trying to really land a good solid jab. You see them pulling the jab back before it lands. There's Roy Jones again jabbing short. And Hopkins jab jabbing short. In fact, Gil, according to punch stat numbers, they threw a combined 61 jabs in the first round. Two of them landed. Jones reaching over the top with the right hand. Appears determined to get just a little bit closer to Hopkins, though he's being cautious as he does so. Well, what, what he's doing, Jim, he's, he's, he's throwing that jab, but he's trying to step back at the same time. He can't do that. It's first step in, then step back. to the body by Hopkins. Good left hook, good solid left hook. Partially blocked left hook by Roy Jones. Jones still short with the jab and so is Hopkins. When we met with Roy Jones yesterday, he was in the middle of a 24-hour dry-out period to help him make weight. Did that affect him coming into tonight, Gil? Well, if, not if they do it properly, Jim. If, uh, if a fight is in excellent condition and the dry, there's a good right hand by Jones over that slow left hand to Hopkins. But if, if in fact, you do it properly, he had, he had the, uh, from the way in this morning, he had all this time to get the liquids back in his body. And if he didn't overdo that with the liquids, and if he ate properly, he's okay. Told us that he would eat two meals, one in the morning, one late afternoon. Emphasis on carbohydrates. Jones knows a lot about his body for a young fighter. 
Hopkins with another right hand to the body. And Jones still trying to throw the right hand over the top. So far, Roy Jones has not attempted to get to Bernard Hopkins body. Jones doesn't like to fight on the rope. If Hopkins can maneuver Jones to the ropes, he has him in a place where the young fighter is uncomfortable. Good solid left hand by Hopkins in that last exchange. A little smile on Hopkins' face as they near the end of round two. You get the sense that Bernard, the executioner Hopkins, trying to become Philadelphia's first middleweight champion ever, would you believe it? Is gaining confidence, but maybe he loses some after that right hand by Jones. First Philadelphia born middleweight champion, Jim. Joey Giardello, a Philadelphia fighter, was a middleweight champion. Okay, you don't start touching him now. You got your run, you start feeling him. So I'm going to the head all the time, try to hit his body and then come back up. Set your, set your, I'll set your pattern, okay? <laughs> Doing good. Don't let him lay back. Take it to him, bro. Take it to him, You hear what I'm saying? Take it to him. Give me a spit bucket. Give me a spit bucket up here. Spit bucket. Mm -hmm. No, the spit bucket. Go lay on the outside, son. All right. Take the fight to him. Pressure. Take it to him with the leg there. Take it to him. come to you. All right. You heard it. You heard it. Jones' corner. They were advising him to throw some body punches. Jones seemed too eager to to not get hit. Well, well, you've got to be willing to take some kind of punch to land a good punch. Well, that's what I was trying to point out. Uh, I said to him, he's trying to jab and get out of the way at the same time. You can't put, do both at once. It's only split-second timing, but you have to step in with the jab, land the jab, then move out of the way. Neither fighter yet committed to aggression. It remains a cautious and tentative affair. The primary voice in Roy Jones's corner between rounds is that of trainer Alton Merkerson. And in the corner of Bernard Hopkins, you hear the voice of trainer Bowie Fisher. Interestingly, Fisher once trained Jesse Ferguson, who we'll see in the heavyweight championship bout later on. Yeah, Hopkins, Hopkins just came up and butted Jones you let go. You right on the chin. And referee Steve Smoger tells Jones not to hold Hopkins. Let him out. That's it. Let him out. Hey, don't punch. Don't punch. Don't punch. Jones seems very, very tight. Doesn't seem to be relaxed at all up to this point. He looks far different than the Roy Jones who swaggered into the ring and destroyed the first two opponents we saw him with here on HBO. Hopkins still short with the jab. Now Jones is boxing with his left hand down around his knee. I used to teach uh, my fighters that the uh, jab to use every once in a while, Jim. I called it an up jab. It's very hard to block, but also it leaves your chin wide open. Either guy has the confidence to really step in there with their punches at the moment. It is a display of mutual respect so far. And one which is not likely to hold the attention of this audience for long. Overhand right by Jones, lands in close quarters. And the left hand. Jones starting to get a little closer to Bernard Hopkins. Still missing with the jab. Now he sticks one into Hopkins' chin. And again, that, that left hand is right down around his knee. That's the position from which Muhammad Ali used to throw the jab. Right hand, left foot, left back, and Hopkins answers with a right hand. Roy landed the right hand over the top, but you're right, Bernard had an answer in reserve. Is he daring him to throw the right hand when he keeps it down there again? Uh, no, I really think he's thinking offensively, uh, Larry. I think he's, he's, it's just another way to throw the jab, another way to get at the guy. Right, let's go. Round three coming to a close. They have barely begun to move against each other. Keep it 
on it. Keep the pressure on it. Water. Water. I like that pressure. Keep it a spit bucket. Right 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 Keep it on it. Keep it on it. Don't wait for them to give you nothing. You're gonna take it away right. from them. Don't, don't All right. Come on, All right. Man. Now you got yourself together now. You got yourself together. You understand me? Take it to us from your pocket. From here on. From here on. Move your hand and get in there and bang with both hands at this guy. You understand the boy's fucking scared. Harold Letterman, how did you see the first three rounds? Larry, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Roy Jones Jr. Larry, I think Roy's not only landing the better shots, but he's using a ring real nice, and his left jab is so quick, Bernard doesn't have a chance to get off. Every time Bernard gets near him and wants to throw the right hand, Roy sticks a left jab in his face. Roy's quick hands, I think, are winning the fight so far. Well, I have also given Jones the first three rounds, but I have to admit that I'm glad it's chilly here. At, J at RFK Stadium because it's keeping me awake. Well, you know, I, I I think every round has been close. I've given two rounds to Jones and fourth one even, but they're very, very narrow margins. Hopkins drives Jones into the ropes to begin round four. Little wrestling back here. Don't punch, don't punch, don't punch. And you know, uh, uh, as you had mentioned, Larry, after the second round, they uh, advised Jones to go to the body. I'm still looking for him to throw a body punch. I don't think he's thrown a single attempted body punch. Hopkins with two left hooks. Again, drives Jones into the room. And you can see how uncomfortable Roy Jones is with his back against the ropes. And Hopkins is very, very effective when he moves a guy against the ropes. So things hey, turning Bernard, the executioner, Hopkins' way early here in round four. Out, boy, you out. like redemption stories? Hey, hey, hey. Hopkins is one. Spent four years in prison That's doing a hard shit. time for a oh, cane snatching. Good combination by Roy Jones. Right hand, left hook, and there's another left hook right hand. Those flashy fast hands, very, very difficult to deal with. Jones with a right hand over the top and another right hand in close. Still no body punching. And he has landed combinations which were virtually non-existent in the first three rounds of the fight. Hopkins misses the right hand. Again drives Jones in the Left hook was partially blocked. Jones has these unorthodox move, out, moves, but he has so much talent That's and his it, hands it. are so fast that he lift. makes them work. Yeah, I'm not sure I would try to change too much about him. Sometimes those unorthodox foot movements in the ring lead to explosive punching power. Really not too much happening now, it's just a chess match. Right hand landed inside for Jones. Again, again an unorthodox punch, Jim. I mean, these are combinations I've never seen before. Another straight right hand. Jones now dispensing with the jab and throwing more right hand leads. Hopkins again scores effectively as Jones leans against the ropes. <laughs> Round four comes to a close. Coming up, an interview with that man, Tommy Morrison, the heavyweight scheduled to go against George Foreman on the evening of Monday, June 7th. And that fight takes place just over two weeks from tonight. Foreman against Morrison for the WBO Heavyweight Championship. Could be George's last appearance in the ring. We say that every time now. Live Monday, June 7 on TVKO. Oscar De La Hoya, the promising lightweight Olympic gold medal star, also on the card and featured on the program. Call your cable operator for details of that TVKO special pay-per-view event and how to get it into your home. Hopkins is the better school fighter, but this isn't school. Maybe it's more of a schoolyard the way Jones fights, Gil. You know, you're, you're absolutely right, uh, Larry. 
Hopkins is very, very sound fundamentally. Good stance, snaps the left jab, keeps his hands up. And, and Roy Jones, with that tremendous talent and quickness that he has, negates a lot of that stuff. And he makes these moves so naturally. He jumps in with punches, I mean, which is a no-no. If he ever gets nailed jumping in, but we count him 10. But he's so quick. I'm sure that Hopkins has never been in a ring with a guy like Roy Jones. Jones lands a left hand in close as Hopkins chases into the ropes. Certainly the more powerful blows so far have been landed by Jones and Gill. He threw a body punch and another couple of body punches. And two more, but you notice, uh, Jim, that uh, Hopkins, uh, again, with his good fundamental defense, Jones is not able to get off those five, six, and seven punch combinations uh, as we have seen in the past. No, but the body punch did set up a straight right hand, which Jones landed in close quarters. Against the ropes, it is all Hopkins. How do you train for a fighter like Jones, Gil? As, as we mentioned before, Hopkins, can't find an sparring partner Hopkins like has probably never seen a, a guy that fights uh, the way Roy Jones fights. And I've been around a while, I haven't seen anybody, but uh, right now Hopkins is really pressing Jones and making it work. Bang some good body shots in there. Jones is going to have to find a formula for getting off the ropes when Hopkins traps him there because it is scoring time for Bernard Hopkins whenever he gets Roy maneuvered against the ropes. Couple of left hooks to the body and one up top from Jones. Now Jones turns southpaw and turns back conventional. And Jim, you had mentioned the fact that the Roy Jones was having a problem making the weight. If in fact he really had a problem, uh, the latter rounds could be very, very difficult for Roy Jones. Jones turned southpaw for a moment to give Hopkins a different look, but didn't throw a punch from that stance. Now he's back to his conventional stance and back to the right-hand leads. And Hopkins now has a swelling under his right eye. Solid punches by Jones. The left hook to the chest landed. Commitment to body punching has represented a big improvement for Jones in this round. That's but no early knockout tonight. As five rounds are in the books, they fight their way past the bell at the end of round five and now go to the corners. Coming up, we remind you, the heavyweight championship battle between champion Riddick Bowe and the unlikely challenger Jesse Ferguson. Has any man ever earned the right for a heavyweight championship shot? Coming into the fight with four losses in his last six bouts, unlikely. And there is Bo as he warms up in his dressing room under the watchful eye of trainer Eddie Futch. But you know, Jim, if he hadn't lost four of his previous five, he wouldn't have gotten a shot at Mercer. That's why he got the chance. <laughs> oh, just don't wait so long for the outside, son. You got to take a fight to him with more than one punch. You must punch in a series of punches. Two, three, fours, fours, rip them shot. Give me a little Vaseline here. Give me a little Vaseline. Yeah. As they go into round six, according to punch stat numbers, Bernard Hopkins is landing a paltry 14% of his punches, only 35 out of 250 attempts. Jones only slightly better, 60 out of 239, but that's 25%. If the judges were looking at these numbers, they would have to suspect that Jones has the edge in the bout. You know, you, Larry, Larry, you asked me the question, how would uh, I train a guy to fight uh, Roy Jones? One thing I would tell my fighter if he was fighting Roy Jones was throw your punches at his chest. Don't try to hit him in the head, throw him at his chest. His head will move into some of the punches. At least you're gonna hit something and knock him a little bit off balance. I mean left hand and right hand. Jones behaving in the past two rounds as though he has suddenly been told it is legal to punch to the body. Open this round with some body punching to complement the body punches he threw in the last round after four rounds without a single such attempt. 
Look at that beautiful move that Roy Jones made to escape from the ropes. Just unbelievable, just all natural talent. Hopkins fighting back in the middle of the ring. Jones doubled up with the right hand. And now Hopkins back in the advantageous position of having Roy Jones pressed against the ropes. Jones just doesn't have the mechanics to turn that situation around, Bill. Does he seem that way? What, one thing he should be doing is he should be moving, uh, as he did, move out to his right and get away from those ropes. It's, it's one of the things that a, a trainer should teach a fighter uh, to do, is uh, to escape from the ropes when he's on the ropes. Jones landed a right hand and a left in that exchange. Neither doing much damage. Hopkins comes over the top of the right, and Jones ducks under most of it. And Hopkins threw some nice counter punches, short punches to the head. Get the Jones flurry to the body. There's Jones throwing a beautiful double left hook. Right hand over the top by Jones. He's landed as many clean blows in the last 20 seconds as had been the case to that point in the round. Now he turns southpaw. And again, doesn't throw a punch from that stance. Simply turns and gives Hopkins the look, then turns back to the conventional stance. Hopkins becoming tentative in the last minute of round six. Allowing Jones to dictate to him from the center of the ring. If you're Bernard Hopkins' trainer, Bowie Fisher, you might want to advise your man to go back to the ropes as often as possible. That seemed to be Hopkins' most effective round. He's going to have to get bolder and more aggressive. Harold. I'm not Give us your score point. midway through this 12 rounder. Larry, I've got it six to nothing, 60 to 54, Roy Jones Jr. Larry, I just think Roy Jones Jr. is landing the better shots. Uh, he's very slippery. Uh, in round six, he used a maneuver that I loved. He shoe shined him. I mean, it was like a shoe shine guy, you know, using a shoe shine rig. Hit him five or six shots in the body. Uh, beautiful combination. Roy Jones Jr., I think, is just winning on points. I gave that last round to Hopkins, uh, but so far, this is a little bit like watching a. Uh, Congressman argue on C-SPAN. Okay, so we look at it. Where do Round seven of the continuing debate between Bernard Hopkins and Roy Jones. They're fighting for the IBF World Middleweight Championship vacated by James Tony when Tony moved up from 160 to 168 pounds. For either fighter, it will be the first world title of his career. I'd like to see one of the two fighters really start to establish a left jab. They've both been short with their jabs all night long because they respect the other guy too much. Good left hook by Hopkins. with a lot of snap on his punches here in round seven. And at this point, Gil, I have to suspect that there is some credence to the story that Roy Jones had trouble making weight and may not be ideally trained for the fight. He just looks lazy in the upper body compared to his previous appearances on these airways. Well, it seems to me, Jim, that somehow I mentioned that he was tight before the fight. I don't know whether it's his weight or the, or the pressure of this fight. I think he's a little tight in the fight up to this point. Just let's remember, Hopkins is the best fighter he's ever been in there with, and that's also making him tight. Jones trying to deliver one of the combinations for which he's become known. Hopkins, straight left hand. And Hopkins is committing the same sin that Jones commits. Every time he throws a jab, it's short. He tries to get out of the way at the same time he's throwing the punch. 
Hopkins beginning to duck away from Roy's combinations a little bit. Now he chases Jones to the ropes again. And he muscles him back against the ropes. Look how quick that Jones is, though. Just natural talent. And Bring Jones it. is starting to counter more effectively off the ropes, Bill. Maybe beginning to get more comfortable in there. Like a Plano Whitaker escape move for Jones. Looked like he was trying to walk across the ring. That time Hopkins is unsuccessful in trying to trap Jones against the rope. Their left arms are locked. Or Jones' left is locked into Hopkins' right, I should say. And now referee Steve Smoker finally breaks him apart. Good body punching by Roy Jones. Don't punch, don't punch. Step, step, step. So as the tactical battle continues between Bernard Hopkins and Roy Jones, we visit the locker room of one of the most unlikely heavyweight challengers of all time, Jesse Ferguson. Loser of nine of his last 15 bouts, four of the last six. He earned this shot, if you want to use the term earned, with his victory over Ray Mercer, February 6th in New York on a night when Mercer was expected to have a tune-up against Ferguson for his scheduled shot with Riddick Poe. It was a unanimous decision for Jesse, a fight which he dominated from bell to bell, and it gave him the chance to be here tonight. Pretty soon, Hopkins is gonna have to try to turn this into a brawl and make something happen. Well, he has to hit something when he throws his punches. He can't pull back with that jab. As I, as I had mentioned earlier, if I had a guy fighting Jones, I'd be throwing punches at his chest. But at least you hit something and you're moving with the first punch. And if you move him with the first, then you can hit him with a couple of more punches, hopefully. But it's, he's like Quicksilver, though. He's very, very difficult to hit with solid punches. Part of the disadvantage of staying in a boxing match with Jones is that Jones' stylishness and flashiness are bound to earn him some subliminal points. Now Hopkins lands a couple of punches and again pins Don't Jones punch, against the ropes momentarily. Together, Gill, they're landing 10% of their jabs. Uh, and, and again, uh, Hopkins threw a right hand and Roy Jones, oh, good left hook to the body. Jones pulled his head back to get away from the right hand. That, Muhammad Ali could get away with that. I've never seen anybody else been able to do it except Roy Jones. Jones landed a left hook. A little bit looser in the upper body right now, or so it seems. And was the case through the first half of the fight. <laughs> Good right hand by Hopkins. Caught Jones coming in. Another, another right good hand. right hand. Two good solid right hands by Bob. Another good right hand. Jones seems momentarily off balance as the result of the three straight right hands from Bernard Hopkins. No warning for a low blow. Jones was just under the belt line with the left hook. That, that encouraged Hopkins. He's throwing that right hand. There's another right hand by Hopkins on the inside. begins to throw the right. Jones tries to come with the left. Jones is switching to South Boys, really trying to confuse Hopkins now. And now he finally throws a punch from that stance, and it's an effective left hook. And Hopkins counted with another right hand. Good left hook by Hopkins. Well, few observers here would have expected this fight to go to a 12-round decision, but it remains mostly a boxing match, now almost two-thirds of the way through the scheduled 12 rounds. Southpaw again for Jones, 
And again, he stops punching as he turns to that stance. Left hook by Jones puts the finishing touches on round number eight. And at the bell, Hopkins went back to his corner and nodded to his people that he thinks he has found something here. Let's get it in there. Let's get that right hand watch inside. It, watch it now. Hold him now. Give me some deep breaths. Be deep. Be deep. Give me deep. Give me some deep breaths. Keep it on his head. Keep it on his head. Got to be. Keep your feet in the angles. Make him change. When he change, where I catch him. Make him Over the top. Over the top. Just a nice round. On his head. Now, here's about the first time we've had a chance to show you something significant in a replay. And there you saw it. Hopkins lead right hand. Press this lane with body shots. Bang him, bang him. Rough him up. Neither fighter landing a significant percentage of punches. Hopkins landing a very insignificant percentage of punches. Well, now, if Hopkins nodded to his corner and said that he thinks he found the key. Let's see if he really has. has another C-span beginning. Now Jones is starting to stiffen up that left jab, getting a little closer with it. Leaning forward more with the upper body gill, committing to it just a little bit more. No longer trying to run away and jab at the same time. Left hook as Hopkins comes in. Left to the body by Jones. He's just so quick, Jones. There he made a mistake. He led with the right hand. Missed, but he didn't have to pay for the mistake because he's so quick. Jones gets some leverage on that left hook to the body. If he had used it in the first six rounds, or the first four or five rounds anyway, he might have a more commanding lead than you suspect is the case at this moment. Well, I have Jones well ahead in the fight, but again, I mentioned a lot of close rounds. He's so quick, Jones. He does things that you just don't see other fighters do. Our unofficial scorer, Harold Letterman, at last look had given every round to Jones. But logic tells you, most boxing judges, when scoring a fight, are psychologically constrained not to give every round to one fighter. Well, it, it, it is very difficult. I mean, the, the other guy is in there, and he is causing some damage. But uh, again, well, the, the big mistake that, that Hopkins is making, he's trying to hit Jones to the head with that first punch. And Jones is just too quick. Big right hand by Jones. Roy Jones becoming more accurate as the fight goes on. About two rounds ago, he began to reach toward the 50% mark in connect percentage. Jones is starting to breathe a little heavily, Jim. Starting to show signs of wear and tear. Hopkins leaning on Jones against the ropes. Hopkins, three years older than Roy Jones at 27. Right hand by Jones landed as round nine comes to a close. All right, champ. All right. Jones, Jones has never been in a long, grueling fight like this. Hopkins has had a couple of long fights. Okay. Hold this cup out. Okay. There you go. There you go. All right. There you go, there you go. All right. You ain't do we talk about that round. You ain't got to bang. You ain't got to bang, okay? Harold Letterman, you give us your scorecard okay. through keep nine rounds. Gil, I've got it 90 to 81, nine to nothing, Roy Jones. I just think that he's winning this fight with the power shots. He, uh, you know, 
Bernard Hopkins put pressure on him, but it's effective aggressiveness that counts. And Bernard Hopkins, when he moves in, is just not effective enough to win a round. Roy Jones is landing the better shots, the harder shots, the cleaner shots. I think he's winning this fight clearly. I think Hopkins needs a knockout to win. Well, I agree that Hopkins needs something very dramatic to win this fight, but I have it seven rounds to two. And again, I make the point that most boxing judges, after giving one fighter several rounds, will begin to try to find a reason to give a round to the other guy. They want to stay on the same page and not be too extreme. Well, especially when there have been so many close rounds, there's a tendency to say, I gave the other man some of the close rounds, I'm going to give it to this guy. Yeah, let's this even it up. <laughs> All of that is by way of saying that we don't expect the official judges for the fight to be emulating Harold's whitewash evaluation. Hopkins leaning in and trying to force Jones back onto the ropes. Jones landed nearly half his punches by punch count numbers in the last round. There was another example of Jones leading with a left hook and missing it and still able to land the left hook to the body. He turns southpaw again and again tries to land the left from the southpaw stance. Now he stays and jabs with the right hand for the first time. Turns back conventionally. He's starting to feel good, Jim, because he just let out a, a roof, a wall. I guess it's a wall with you, throw. Jones. He scores with a combination and then backs away from the ropes effectively. Lands the right hand over the top. That wide winging right hand, you wouldn't teach it, but he makes it work, Gil. Again, he mentioned he's like lightning. And he's such an unorthodox guy. And Larry gave me that puzzle, how I'd have how I train a guy to fight him. It really is a puzzle. I mean, you just can't hit this guy with the first punch you throw. And Hopkins again is looking all night to hit him on the chin. And it's just such an elusive target. You have to set him up. Jones has not been able to hurt Hopkins at any time in the bout. You suspect that Roy has less punching power, or at least less punching power tonight than had been anticipated. Or does Hopkins have a terrific chin, Gil? No, I think it's a question that he hasn't hit uh, Hopkins with that many solid punches. Hits him two or three in a row, we may see some funny things happen. can smile. Usually that means the fighter is hurt a little bit. Now how did you like that move, Jimmy? Threw a left hook and then ran halfway across the ring and stopped quickly and nailed Hopkins again. You can't teach anybody that. That's natural talent. Well, the comparisons, maybe too many of them, have been made to Ray Leonard. Leonard, too, used his incredible physical skills to do unorthodox things in the ring. Yeah, but I've seen Ray Leonard, and uh, Roy Jones is no Ray Leonard. <laughs> Not yet, that's for sure. Jones using the fast hands to try to dominate these exchanges. Round 10 comes to a close. Coming up, heavyweight championship action, Riddick Bowe defending his title for the second time. The unlikely challenger, Jesse Ferguson, originally from Nightdale, North Carolina, has spent much of his boxing career training and working in Philadelphia. And there is Bo as he warms his body up. Hedgeman Lewis there, one of the assistants to Eddie Futch. Futch himself, the octogenarian trainer, watching in close quarters. I got it. You just grab the buck. As soon as y'all hear that second out, go. You need to see there that Roy Jones prepares to enter the 11th round for the first time in his career. Jones has hit Hopkins with what he calls his chin checkers. And really nothing much has happened. Hopkins is right there. Again, because he hasn't hit him with any solid combinations, Larry. It's leap in, one quick punch, but he just hasn't been able to put them together against a good, solid uh, defensive fight. Hopkins is just uh, not fighting a good offensive fight. Jones can win the fight. 
He becomes the fourth 1988 American Olympian to have won a world title. He'll join Michael Carbajal, Riddick Lowe, and Kennedy McKinney. I think I know how Bernard Hopkins feels about this time in the fight. And it's almost a, a sure thing that after the fight's over, he's going to be disappointed in his performance and say, get him for me again. And with some of my fighters, I'll bring it back to the dressing room and they'd say they'd lose a fight and they'd say, get him for me again. I'll say, why? You just had him. And that's exactly the situation here. Hopkins is going to believe that he wasn't aggressive enough, right? He's, he's going to say, well, I did it all wrong. I kept waiting, waiting, waiting all night to land a big punch and it never came along. Instead of trying to set it up. I mean, I can't believe the things that Jones can get away with in the ring. That time he brought his, he poured with his right hand, brought his left hand all the way behind him, and Hopkins still couldn't land a solid punch. Jones talking to referee Steve Smoger, asking him to ask Hopkins to let his right hand go. Smoger did nothing, and eventually Hopkins stepped away. Right cross lands solidly on Hopkins' chin, and Bernard once again doesn't move. And mentioning uh, referee Steve Smoker, I think he's done a great job in this fight. A couple of times these guys tried to fight after the bell, and he was right there when the bell rang to stop the action. He's a good referee. I think one of the best. In good condition, moves around well, and controls the fight. An East Coast referee works out of New Jersey and New York. You don't see him when we go out to Las Vegas. Round 11 comes to a close. Let's sign this round, baby. Let's sign this round. Give me some hands. Give me some hands. I don't want him to land on you at all. I don't want you to take no chance. No chances at all. I want you keeping him on the end of your punches, but stay busy. Keep them hands going and your feet going, okay? That's one, baby. This is, in the center, this is it. This is it, boy. This is it. Show me some go. Give me some deep. Go. Give me some deep. Let it go, baby. Let's blow the You can do it. I know you can do it. You got a double drill. Hit this motherfucker with that double drill. Bang, 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 anybody. You got to go with the double drill. Right. On his head, on his head. All right. Mm -hmm. Pull the stool down and I'll take the towel and get it. Oh, give me some more, folks. Let me stand up. Okay. Okay, let's go. 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 let Right here, With Bernard Hopkins needs a knockout to win this fight. Perhaps one or two judges uh, disagrees. You may have heard Hopkins' promoter, Butch Lewis, between rounds, urging him to shoot the right hand. He hasn't landed a lot of rights. Jones appears intent on controlling round 12 with his jab and his foot movement. In case you've just joined us, this is HBO's World Championship Boxing, the first half of a doubleheader. Olympic star of the 1988 Seoul Games, Roy Jones, denied a gold medal by an unjust decision, but voted the outstanding boxer in those games, trying to win his first world championship, the vacant IBF middleweight title. Jones is the number two contender. Excuse me, Gil, go ahead. Jones has been throwing some beautiful combinations, Jim. For a change, he's going to the body first, then back up to the head. But he does such an orthodox thing, unorthodox thing. Hopkins thinks he has him trapped against the ropes and he just does the unexpected. These are the top two contenders in the IBF rankings. They fight for the title vacated when James Tony moved up to 168 pounds. One of them about to become a world champion for the first time. I think Jones Gil, would certainly have his hands full with Tony, who's such a good defensive fighter. Well, 
Hopkins is a good defensive fighter. I, I just don't think that he attacked Jones right from the beginning of the fight. You can just see that uh, Jones is just outsmarts him. It's like cat and mouse the entire fight. So the irony is that while Jones may pick up his first world championship, this performance is likely to diminish the luster of his image somewhat. Rick, I'm here, don't touch. Well, again, again, he took a big step up in class. Bernard Hopkins is a good, solid fighter. And it shows he's fighting a good, solid professional. Takes a good opponent to allow you to look your best, which is why I said earlier on, lower expectations. Good call, Larry. It's unfair to a fighter, I believe, to expect him to look like Mr. America or Mr. World every time out. The opponent has something to say about it. No Here's the good news, guys. This bout has done nothing to dilute the excitement potential for our big heavyweight championship fight upcoming. The crowd has retained all of its potential enthusiasm. That's it, fellas. That's it, fellas. That's it, fellas. Fighters circled the ring with hands held high. And now the judges will go to work and tell us who has won the vacant IBF World Middleweight title. An unmemorable fight between Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins. Before I go up in the ring, uh, I'll tell you that I've scored it nine rounds to three for Jones, 117 to 111 points and uh, Harold Letterman will give us his scorecard shortly. Larry, I've got it 118, 110, 10 rounds to two, Roy Jones Jr. I thought he rested slightly in the last two rounds. I thought Bernard Hopkins pulled out 11 and 12 because Roy just didn't do a heck of a lot, and Bernard took it to him. One thing I'll say for Bernard Hopkins, he's got a big heart, a tremendous jaw, he takes a great shot, and he just keeps on coming, but taking a good shot don't win rounds, and Roy Jones Jr. landed too many good punches. Uh, Bernard Hopkins, a big heart, a well-marketed fighter. Uh, I love the act, but uh, Roy Jones Jr. won the fight. Now, Harold, did we bully you off of that whitewash? Did you find yourself looking in the last three rounds for a way to give a couple of rounds to Bernard Hopkins? Is that what happened? Larry, the, uh, Jim, the truth of the matter is is that any judge will look to throw him around here and there, but I think Hopkins did pull out legitimately the last two rounds. Right now, let's go to ring announcer to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards, and all three judges, Lynn Carter, Eugene Grant, and Al DeVito, scored the bout 116 to 112 for the winner by unanimous decision. And now the IBF middleweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Well, Gil, what do you think? Well, I, I thought that Roy Jones clearly won the fight. I had it a little uh, wider than 116-112. Uh, Bernard Hopkins tried his game, took a good punch, but he never was in the fight offensively, in my opinion. Ultimately, these scores will not be remembered, nor will much of the action here. It was, at best, a tactical battle. Final punch stat numbers for the two fighters. You can see that Jones wound up landing 35% after a very desultory start in the first few rounds, in the closing rounds of the fight, he was landing at about a 50% rate. Hopkins never got far above the 20% level, 23% connect percentage for the fight. Therein lay the difference in the scoring. And now let's go up to Larry Merchant with the new middleweight champ. Roy Jones, congratulations. This has been a long time coming. I know you've been looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, definitely been a long time coming. And something I was looking forward to I knew I was going to have a tough time. Um, I got to take my head off to Bernard Hopkins, man. He's a tough guy. I promise he's a tough guy. But uh, I just basically outboxed him, stayed on the outside. In the inside, he couldn't really do me a lot of harm, and I could stay inside of his power, so he wasn't really that dangerous. Uh, he landed a couple good shots, but he never really had me hurt, so you know, I was pretty safe. I got hit a little more than I wanted to, but it's the world title my first time. Hey, let's call it we number one, baby. We, are you satisfied with your performance? Um... Tonight, you know, that was my first title fight as a world title. You know, I had a lot of pressure on me, so. Were you tight a little bit? I was very tight coming to the fight. I had so much build up on me, and, you know, being 
being you know like I am, I kind of expected that. But um, I thank God, thank God Almighty, I made it through that one, and uh, that won't happen anymore. You know, that was my first time, and that was that. Are you looking to move up to fight someone like James Tony, or do you want to fight at 160? I think I'll stick at 160 for just a little while longer. I kind of like fighting at 160, and um, like I said, you know, I got to thank God for winning my title. I go home, you know, think about things. I may move up, you never know, but right now I'm just happy I got a title. Thank everybody at home for supporting me. Thank all my cousins, Carol, Toy in Atlanta. Everybody all back home, the Lichties, the everybody, you know, I just had a good time. Looking forward to fighting again on HBO. Thank oh, you. Yes, definitely. Thank you very much, Roy. Jim? All right, thanks very much, Larry and Roy. Congratulations to Roy Jones on his first world championship. Gil, does he remain a potential superstar or does he have more to learn than we might have thought? Well, no, I, I think that he can become a superstar. He shows so much natural ability. And again, he fought a guy that really was a good, solid professional, very tough guy to fight. It remains to be seen, but I, I don't think that this is going to be a setback for Roy Jones. After all, he is the champion of the world. Coming up, the heavyweight championship bout. First, let's take a look ahead a couple of weeks to an upcoming event on our sister pay-per-view operation, TVKO. Sit the chair. Tommy Morrison, get in here right now. Oh, Mom. And there's another left hook. That Morrison is good. Real good. It was just announced Tommy Morrison will fight for the champion George Foreman for the WBO heavyweight championship. See the two heaviest hitters in boxing clash for the WBO heavyweight championship Monday, June 7th, live on pay-per-view. Call now to order. And with us now live is half of that attraction, Tommy Morrison, getting ready to go against George Foreman. Tommy, Foreman's a unique entity, a slow whale with enormous punching power. How do you prepare to fight him? Well, well I don't think there's any secret beating George. Obviously, uh, he's certainly the guy you don't want to stand in front of. Uh, he's a guy that you got to beat to the punch. You know, he's, uh, he's a guy that uh, he's a big lumbering guy. He comes in and he's very effective if you let him be. The, the object of uh, fighting for, uh, uh, Foreman is to establish the pace of the fight. I think he's most effective when he uh, di dictates the pace. You showed some weaknesses as a boxer against Carl the Truth Williams, who gave you more trouble than a lot of people had thought might be the case. Are you going to try to shore up your boxing technique, your self-defense, to get ready for George? I think so. Uh, you know, with the Williams bout, we're in there against a cagey guy, and, and regardless of what people say, he was in very good shape for that fight, and I feel that he came in there, he had everything to gain, and, and uh and nothing to lose in that situation. But uh, with Foreman, we're uh, trying to become, each and every time we step into the ring, a more complete fighter. And when I say complete, I mean being able to not only come forward and throw hard punches, but also move, box, and give people angles. And that's what we're looking to do against George. Tommy, if you win the fight, you're going to have a lot of options and a lot of potential commercial clout in the heavyweight division. Now, Lennox Lewis's English manager, Frank Maloney, is telling people at ringside here tonight that there is an agreement in principle for you to fight Lewis with a 50-50 cut of the gate in a fight to come up after the Morrison uh, Foreman fight, if you can win, is that in fact the business you're expecting to do? Uh, it, it has been. Uh, it has been talked about. Uh, that's uh, certainly a very attractive fight for us economically at this point. Uh, obviously, there's bigger and better things ahead once we get past Foreman. But I'm the, a guy that doesn't like to look too far ahead. George is a big obstacle to get around. But once we get around him, then we'll look to uh, see what lies ahead. Tommy, thanks very much Thank for you. your time. We'll see you again in uh, just a little bit more than two weeks. Monday, June 7, TVKO. And here is how to order. Call your local cable operator to check it out and find out how you can see the bout at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.30.